Nice Calvary, to meet you. John Furrier. John, nice to okay, meet you. Okay, you're a VP of marketing. How do you say your last name? Freund. 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 Okay. All right. So uh, we just had your CEO on, co-founder. I look uh, just like him. <laughs> it's like it's like a company interview question. So how do you, you feel? Know, I mean, check I'll see the hair Mark, length and you know, you know you look good. Nice Barry's haircut. hair club for men. You know, we're all we're all part of it. I mean, right? come on, he's pretty got to be pretty pumped. I mean, as a marketer, HP yeah. endorsing you guys. Arm is hot. Everyone knows what Arm in the mobile space um, with the iPad and yeah. mobile devices now servers. You know, people don't. Their first reaction, they don't really kind of put that together. Uh, big, innovative, game-shifting announcement. You're pretty excited. So share with us, one, what's going on with you guys and how excited you really are, and what does this mean to you guys? Well, I mean, it's, it is a it, – it, when you first hear about it, it feels like an unnatural act. I know when, when Barry first called me to ask me about coming to join the team, right, it was like – you want to do what? You want to build servers out of cell phones? He says, no, 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 we're not building servers out of cell phones. We're taking that base technology and building server-class processors out of it. And I said, well, okay, tell me more. <laughs> Can that work? And the more I look at it, I'm like, this could be Damn, the next this big is thing. Be good. Yeah. It could. I mean, you think about it. The industry's gone through so many changes, right? The Unix servers took over the, the mainframes, right? Yeah. x86 servers took over where Unix servers have been. And I've been a part of all those transitions. And let me tell you, you want to be on the, the winning side of those transitions. You don't want to be the part that's um, being replaced. You want to be the new thing. Well, I mean, industry standard servers, we were just talking with, with Barry about how that's kind of an oxymoron because it's really industry's old standard. Um, and things are changing with this new architecture. But if you look at how products are coming to the market in the computer business, mm -hmm. and I'll put that in quotes, the computer business is, as we know, the PC business. And, you know, you had mainframes, minis, and all that client server stuff that we lived through. But now we're in an age of, you know, in, in memory of Steve Jobs, who, who lives in my town and, and is being celebrated as, you know, the, the Edison of our time, talks about that in his products. You look at the iPad, it's closed, people say, and you got Android and Open Alternative. Both these are changing what people think of as computers. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The personal computer, mm -hmm. people are saying is dead, but it's just changing. So how, these products are coming to the market, and, and people use the words purpose-built. How is the product cycle changing with these kinds of innovations? Uh, Can you it's, talk it's, about that's that That's going to be story? one of the more interesting changes, I think. Yeah, in, in a very real sense, what ARM is to the server processor is what same thing Linux was to Unix, right? Because you had you had all these different Unixes, right? You had your AIX, and you had your Solaris, and you had HPUX, and so forth. And they're still out there. Uh, but along comes Linux and says, hey, we can give you the same basic functionality on a completely standardized base that anybody can pick up and run with and then innovate on top, right? Well, in the pro microprocessor space, that's not the way it is today. But with ARM, that's the way it's going to become because there'll be a lot of companies like CalZeta providing a platform that is based on a common underpinning, which is ARM, and then we all innovate on top of that. And that innovation is going to change the industry landscape. One of the things Unix had a problem with, for the folks who don't know, Unix came out of Berkeley, and you know, Bell Labs had this licensing thing, but there was a unification problem. Yep. And unification, everyone had different versions of Unix, and it was a war. Posix and all Posix, that. Posix, oh, yeah. you know, Motif, and we were talking with some friends who are actually yeah, motif, built the Motif. You're, too, you're not old enough to um, run a Motif. Well, I, I have friends who actually ran, he was actually ran Motif. But anyway, I'm... Uh, uh, a little younger than I look, but um, <laughs> Linux changed that. Yeah, is does ARM have the same problem? Is is there a unification that's needed? Can this be industry standard? I think like ARM Linux? is what is what changes it. Right, right now x86 changed it because everybody's on x86, so it's standard. Right. Um, so so long as that solves your problem, that's great. Well, for some problems, it's not the best solution because it's overkill. It's waiting really, really fast, and you're spending a lot of money on a very f great pr performing processor that you may not need. Right? So what, what ARM is doing is very much like what Linux did. It's providing a standard on which other people innovate. You know, you don't, you, you, people do standardize on a distro. I'm a Suse guy. I'm a Red Hat guy. I'm a Canonical guy in my shop. But there, that's more of a, of a support operational standpoint an issue than it is a compatibility issue. And so ARM gives people that standard innovation that people can innovate on top of, as we have. I mean, yeah, we're ARM-based, but what's really exciting about our product is all the other stuff that's on the chip. It's the fabric switch, 80 gigabit switch, it's the management engine, and all the I.O. Can you talk about the specific challenges for the folks out there who know the smartphone business is pretty, you know, or has a smartphone, they know what they get. But people don't understand behind that, behind the covers, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Yeah. Huge data centers yeah. for cloud, um, you know, apps that need to be powered. People are running and changing their architectures literally overnight. 
you know, um, scaling out, scaling up, all that stuff that we talk about. But most users don't understand that there's a lot of stuff that goes on under yeah. the covers. They just want their apps now. Yeah. I mean, literally, yeah. when you go to iTunes, you download an app, you get it instantly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Can you talk about that, the new cloud play behind it and big data and how all these new use cases are, need to have this kind of purpose you know, mentality? It's, it's, it's funny to be sitting here, of all places, right, in, in HP Labs. I used to work for HP, and I remember there was a guy here uh, named Chuck House who used to run HP Labs, and he had this story he talked about called the domestication of the computer. And he had it right. Uh, what, what he didn't realize is that it wasn't the, the computer that was going to be domesticated. It was the interface. So the interface has become a mobile client now. That's been domesticated. That's why there's hundreds of thousands of apps on your mobile device. All the complexity is now hidden from, thank God, hidden from the users that are driving all the demand for information, for photographs, for social social interaction, and, and, and business critical information as well. So everything that happens behind that, is the server. When I, when I play with my new iPhone and ask Siri a question, my iPhone is not running Siri, right? Siri's in the cloud. She's running on Apple servers, right? Um, so all of the heavy lifting is done by the servers. So the chicken and egg here, Carl, is uh, obviously a, software is a big part of that. And HP announced, I think, five partners today. Two were software players, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Canonical and Red Hat. Um, obviously, you need a lot more than that. Now, Talk about your ecosystem and mm -hmm. software partners, and and where are you at uh, with with that? I think Trailblazer is, is Trailblazer. Your, one of your projects, and yep. and how real is that, and and who else is involved in it, and can you bring them to this ecosystem? You know, it it, it all starts with with the customer, and if the customer showed the demand, we believe they will, then the ecosystem will follow because that's where the money is, right? Um, we have Trailblazer now with uh, ten ISVs signed up. Uh, to support uh, early adopters and ongoing production deployment of Calzada servers. So those ISVs are excited. People like Couchbase, people like Datastacks, people like you know Pervasive Data Rush, uh, um, um, Ops Code, and so yeah, forth. A lot of the big data guys. guys the big, the exactly. Players, yeah. It's the big data guys. It's the um, cloud management guys, mm -hmm. right? They see the opportunity here. The next cloud could be could include ARM. It's not going to replace x86, but uh, there will be some workloads that are more efficient to deploy on ARM that will be deployed and delivered through cloud services. They want to be part of that. Okay. Hey, we can get, a, get one of those servers for SiliconANGLE, our big data projects. <laughs> um, just final question for you. Um, explain the story for you guys, um, the company. I see you worked at the big company. You mentioned HP. Also, we could run at IBM. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You've seen the computer industry change, and, you know, and, and now there's a new era. Um, just share with the folks the story around. Wrap this up into a, and put a bow on uh, your story, mm -hmm. startup, and also, like, arm and the impact. Well, it's, 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 you know, it's a classic case of American innovation, right? I mean, you've got somebody with an idea, and he realizes that, that in spite of everybody laughing at him and saying this is not possible and it's not tenable, there's no market. That's Barry you're talking That's about. That's Barry. Who said he, he knew he could do it. It's and he says problem. he can do it, and he goes off and gets the venture capitalists to do something they haven't done in a long, long time, which is to invest in a digital semiconductor company. And not only that, a processor semiconductor company, where a lot of companies Who's have tried investors? and failed. Oh, bat Battery, Highland, and, and, and Flybridge were the, the primary and, venture capitalists. They were the three arm, venture right? capitalists. And Arm is a strategic investor. And they're all, all four of those companies are on our board, as is ATIC, the Advanced yep. uh, Technology Investment Corporation. Yeah, well, that's, it's interesting because you started in 2008. 2008 is when they got started. We got our funding in August 2010. And that's around the time that the uh, Google uh, engineer wrote that paper, you know, brawny cores beat wimpy cores, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. not really in your marketing line, I'm sure. Uh, but You know, but, I'm not using wimpy but, cores but, as my no, headline. I don't blame I you. Know. But, I mean, in <laughs> three short years, that sort of mindset has really changed dramatically, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, think, I right. think so. I think people are hungry for a new solution, right? right. And they're hoping this is it. And uh, so now it's up to us to prove that it can do what we say it can do. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. I mean, as, as HP said today, this isn't the end of the race. Um, we're starting a journey. We're just getting in the car. Uh, good news is there's lots of room on the bus. It's not just a car. And a lot of people are going to jump on board and see where this bus goes. All right, Carl. Well, congratulations. Thanks very much for coming Thanks. on the Cube. Hey, on a very tight very schedule here. All right. Appreciate sure. it. Uh, good luck with everything. Thanks. All right.